Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name's Kate and every Friday I bring you a book review or something book related. So today I'm going to be talking to you about one of my books that came in my box of stories box. So if you want to see the other books that came in there, I will link to that above and you can have a look. I'm not quite through all of them yet. The subject matter of all of them is quite sad and it's quite heavy. So I've needed a break in between, but this week's book is I Thought I Knew You by Penny Hancock. And again, the subject matter, like um, The Childfinder, is quite, it's quite a heavy one, it's quite dark. It's um, about two best friends, they've known each other since uni, they're really close, they live, you know, in the same village, they always, they've always lived close to each other, they moved to be close to each other. Their children are three years apart. And the premise of the book is that the one of the friend's daughters accuses the other son, the other friend's son. Well, it says on the back a heinous crime, which it is. Um, but I don't know how I feel about it. Basically, um, I'm going to read you the back because I think that who do you know better, your oldest friend or your child? And who should you believe? when one accuses the other of an abhorrent crime. Jules and Holly have been best friends since university. They tell each other everything, trading revelations and confessions, confessions and sharing the big moments and the small details of their lives. Holly is the one person that knows about Jules' affair. Jules was there for Holly when her husband died and their two children grew up just three years apart. So when Jules' daughter, Safi, makes a serious allegation against Holly's son's soul, neither woman is prepared for the devastating impact this will have on their friendship and families and everything they believe in, especially as Holly refuses to accept her son's guilty. So as you can imagine, that's a really hard, difficult... I feel like she writes about it well from the two friends' point of view, the distress that Safi feels and the worry and the guilt and the feeling that it's her fault, which a lot of women who are subject to this type of crime feel. And I feel like it was really written well from Holly and Soul's point of view as well. like. Holly automatically wants to defend her son and Saul's a bit like, well, how can you ask me that? Do you not know me at all? Do you not know what I... Do you not know me? Like, really kind of hard, dark subject matter to tackle, especially as parents and parents who are friends with one another and whose children are friends and have grown up to each other, with each other, and you're close to them and you know them and your families are interlinked and intertwined and really close, which is what makes this an interesting story and a difficult story. But I kind of feel like, I guessed, or not guess, that's maybe not the right word, but I had a feeling that this book was gonna go in a different direction to the one that it wants you to think it goes in. Um, so in that regards, it's, interesting and fairly predictable i kind of thought it was going to be end up being one of two people who had committed this crime against safi and not the person accused um like i got about a quarter of a way through the book and i was like i don't know i don't know if this is going to go the way i think it's going to go or i'm meant to be thinking it's going to go like i think that the author wants you to believe that it's going to go down the route of Holly defending her son, Jules defending her daughter, and their friendship breaking apart and it being really awful and but it doesn't actually end up going that way, which was an interesting twist on it. And I did enjoy it. It is really gripping. It's a good read. I just have two complaints about this book, other than the ending which I thought was not going to happen, that didn't even happen. Um, I would say that it's a big book, like it's quite, 
you know, big. And it's not even that thick, but it's like big pages. And it's just, it's really wordy, like the description bits in it, they go on for too long. I found myself almost like skimming down the page and looking for the bits of conversation in there because the descriptions and the thoughts that the characters are having they're just going on way too long there's just too much of it like it's losing my attention it's not keeping my attention it's not keeping the pace of the book up it slows the pace of the book down in that respect which is a bit annoying and I don't think it's very good I think when authors do that I don't know I don't know what the editor's doing in this respect a bit like the Bennett sister, the other Bennett sister, where it was just so long and the pace was so slow. This was another one of those. I mean, I did read this in the weekend, so I'm not saying that it wasn't gripping or it wasn't interesting and it didn't captivate me. I just, so like, where's an example? I should probably have these things ready, but towards the end, like, look, you've got a whole page there of thinking, and then it's only down here where you're on to, like, some conversation. But they're thinking about this conversation that they're going to have with this person here. This is all thinking about this conversation that happens in, like, two lines. It's a bit... I don't know, it's a bit much. It's a bit too wordy for me. I wanted them to just cut it down a bit. And then you wouldn't find yourself, like, skimming down to the conversation so you could kind of find out what's happening and get on with the story as it were because that's what you want um, but other than that like it's a really good book it's a really interesting take on a subject matter that's having a lot of conversation around it in society at the moment and I don't want to go into too much detail about what the accusation was but I will say that Safi accused Sol of a sexual I guess assault, assault against her um, or sexual harassment I guess against her and Holly, who is Saul's mum, is very, she runs workshops on, you know, women's rights and their right to say no and consent and what consent is. So when her son is accused of this, it gets very big, it gets very messy. And when it turns out to maybe not, I'm trying to do this without giving the ending away. But I think I've kind of suggested the rear goes down. So, as you're reading this, I think really keep an open mind. Don't necessarily think that Saul is to blame. And look closely at the people that are being nice. That's what I'll say. And I think it's really important as well in this book that it kind of, it makes you look at things differently because Saul is kind of painted as a bit of a loner, a bit of an outsider. He's had struggle, struggles sitting in at school and he doesn't really have any friends and... You know, he's not long moved to the location where this book is set, which is just outside Cambridge um, in the UK and England. So it's really interesting in that respect that it's kind of a take on our societal assumptions of people as well. And I guess it's not judging books by its covers, literally it's not judging a book by its cover. It's a really, it's a really interesting book and it's a thought provoking book and I really didn't want, I remember reading this book and um, my mum asking me, how's your book, is it sad? Because I told her that all the Fox of Story books were sad and I was like, I'm hoping it's not going to be as sad as I think it is <laughs> or that it, the path it's leading me down is going to be as, end up being as sad as I think it might be. Because I would have been really sad if it had end up, ended up in the way that they want you to think it ends up initially. But when the kind of twist in the story comes and you're kind of led away from your initial path that you, they're taking you down, it does become quite obvious quite quickly what the next path is going to be, how it's going to end basically. I feel like this isn't a very good review, I feel like I'm just skirting around the issues of everything. <laughs> this isn't very helpful for you, is it? Sorry guys, it's just... It's a funny old book, this one. It's a really interesting take on a lot of things that are having big conversations around them at the moment. And you know, a woman's right to be believed and consent and a woman's right to say no. But it's also about 
trust who you trust and it's about educating women I really do believe that and you know educating women educating men educating your sons and your daughters to know what's right and what's wrong and who to trust and who not to trust and to just keep yourself safe and keep an eye on things because it turns out that someone in a position of power in this book has been using his power to manipulate and coerce and I think it's important to teach your sons and daughters about that as well and to recognise the signs of it. It's a really interesting book, it's a really interesting concept and it's not that it's not done well, I just think it's kind of, she kind of copped out a little bit. I think if she'd carried on down the original path, that would have been, I guess, in a way more interesting, more controversial. But the path it goes down isn't a bad one at all. It's a good path to go down. It's a good kind of thing to think about and see where you stand with it morally and stuff, which hopefully everyone would be on the same page of. But interesting book. I would definitely, I would recommend it actually, I was about to say I'd definitely recommend it, but I wouldn't definitely recommend it, but I'd say it's worth a read. If you see it in a bookshop, then it's definitely worth a read, but it's quite heavy. It's, it's, it's quite heavy for, you know, the time that we're on at the moment, but it's an interesting story with an interesting subject matter that definitely does make you think, and that is all I will say on that. So I will see you next week for hopefully a much more light-hearted, more interesting, less beating around the bush book review. See you then.